before we begin, I invite you to uh, look at your bulletins because our greeting as well as our responses are different uh, today and will be for a while. So, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Sisters and brothers, as we head into this uh, season of Lent with purple in the sanctuary, um, with different uh, practices and prayers, um, it is good to, to gather together and do this as a people. Uh, and I invite uh, those who are worshiping from home and those who are here just to let go of all those distractions, all those worries, all those concerns that keep you from being present here and now with our God as we worship. So let us focus our minds and our thoughts on the worship of our God as we listen to this morning's intro. Please join me in our call to worship this morning. Let us worship God who has done great things. We, we rejoice, rejoice in, in our God, God 
who made, made a way through, through the, the desert, desert of this world. Let us worship God, who has caused streams of mercy to flow in the wasteland. We, we are, are the, the people God has, has formed through Christ. Christ. We, we worship him and we rejoice. rejoice. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. We, we praise, praise God for the grace that has saved us. Hallelujah. We, we rejoice. rejoice. Please rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn, number 511, Amid the Thronging Worshippers. Sisters and brothers, today is the first Sunday in the liturgical season of Lent, the lead up to Good Friday and to Easter. Lent is traditionally a season of preparation, reflection, renewal, repentance, and fasting. Lent is a time to mourn the brokenness of the world and the damage caused by sin, including and especially our own sin. Yet it is also a time to rejoice and to celebrate the good news of salvation that is freely given through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. We are starting a new series in which we'll be looking at good news. We'll hear some testimonies from members of our congregation and something we'll call the Good News Cafe. But now, I invite you to join me in a moment of silent confession followed by an opportunity to pray together the prayer of confession printed in our bulletin. So let us pray. In praying together, if you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand, but with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, more than watchmen wait for the morning. Almighty God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope. 
Renew us by your Holy Spirit, that we may follow your commands and proclaim your reign of love through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, listen to these words from 1 Peter. For you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And as we hear these words from God, we can't help but find ourselves both assured and challenged. Assured that we are indeed God's people who are forgiven, loved, and cherished, but also challenged to live as people of light who have been called out of darkness. For it is God's, uh, it is God's will that we who believe and who have been shown mercy would live lives that glorify him and give praise and honor to Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John, the, John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and angels attended him. After John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. Time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. Do you please pray with me? Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we ask that you would fill this place fill our hearts and our minds, buffer our ears that only what is from you would be heard, and then open our mouths that what is from you might pour out into the world. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So I don't know about you, although I can probably guess that you're tired of bad news. I know I am. It seems like we have had a lot of bad news over the last couple years. Pandemic, economic crisis, political mess. 
And now a, a war in Europe. Refugees fleeing Ukraine. Threats of nuclear war. Not to mention drought and fires and floods. 24-7, we are bombarded with bad news. There is no lack of it. You can find it anytime, anywhere, just for the asking. And the bad news gets old, doesn't it? And it is important for us to remember that as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are not about that. We are all about good news. Good news, gospel, that's what the word gospel means. Literally, it's just a, from the German for good news. And that's what, what Mark records for us in this book that we know as the, the gospel according to Mark, the good news according to Mark. He launches into his book with those very words, the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah. The good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. And as he, he tells us about that good news, he tells us that Jesus, whose, whose birth and youth he tells us nothing about, right? he just launches into Jesus coming to John to be baptized. And as he comes out of the water, there is that voice that, that booms out as the Spirit of God descends on him like a dove. And the voice saying, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Who knew that that's who this, this carpenter from Nazareth was? That this one was the Son of God. They didn't know until it was revealed to them. You see, that's the thing about the good news that, that we proclaim. The good news is not, is not a good idea. It isn't something we have figured out so that we can make sense of the world, so that we can, can improve ourselves, so that we can have a better, happier life. The good news is not from us. It is good news, proclamation. Something that isn't known or figured out, but something that is revealed. The good news about Jesus is that in Jesus, we know God. In Jesus, we have, in the face of Jesus Christ, the very image, the very representation of the God who made us and made everything. Early in the, in the third century, there was a, a theologian by the name of Origen. And Origen had this great analogy. He said, he said you know, imagine a village with a huge statue, so immense that you can't exactly see what it's supposed to represent. But then finally someone miniaturizes that statue so that you can see the person it honors. And Origen said, that is what God did in his son. Paul tells us that this, this self-miniaturization of God is the visible icon, the, the very image of the invisible God. In Christ, God becomes comprehensible, knowable, and personal. The good news about God is known in Jesus because that is where God reveals God's self to us in a full and complete way. That is only in Jesus that we really can come to know God. 
And it's that good news that, that now we can know God, not as some immense, incomprehensible concept like a statue, but as a human being, God in flesh, who shows us everything about what God is, who he is, what he is like. The good news is not a good philosophy or good idea for how to live our lives, but a revelation. And notice in the way it comes about here, we, we hear not only in Revelation that Jesus is the very Son of God, beloved and well-pleasing well to God. But the next thing that happens is, is that the Holy Spirit, part three of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit drives Jesus out into the wilderness. And we, we hear that he is out in the wilderness being tempted for 40 days. God, the Son of God, not only revealed to us in terms of God's character, but revealed to us as, as a God we can relate to, a God who can relate to us, who understands what it is to hunger and to thirst, a God who, who is tempted. Think about that, a God who is tempted just like we are. And yet, we're reminded, tempted but without sin. This is the good news that, that this God is someone who understands us and whom we can relate to. And I love this, this just little sentence at the end there. The Spirit drives him out in the wilderness and he was with the wild animals and the angels attended him. This is a God who doesn't just care about you and me, about human beings, those who are created in the image of God, but everything in heaven and earth, the very animals, the very creatures. Jesus is out there with them the wild animals, and with the, the heavenly beings, the angels, that in this God, heaven and earth are focused together. And this is a God who cares about both. The good news is that in Jesus we know who God is, what God is like. And the other thing that's, that uh, sticks out here is we're told that, that after John is put in prison, Jesus goes out proclaiming the good news. Preaching is the word here. He's, he goes out and preaches good news. And he says, the time has come. The time has come. The time is fulfilled. And he's using words that are used uh, for giving birth. Okay. Now, I've, I've experienced kind of at a distance what it is to go through pregnancy. Right? That nine months of, of waiting and wondering and expectation. But do women who are mothers know much better than I what that is like. To have something growing within you, being nourished by you, going through all the, the challenges that that brings, and then through labor, and the incredible work and pain and struggle that that is. But when the time is fulfilled, there's a baby. There is new life. All that pregnancy is fulfilled in a purpose, a new child. And Jesus is saying that his coming 
is the culmination of all the pregnancy of God's plan from the very beginning. That now is the time for the good news to to break into the world. That God is doing something new, bringing new life. Something to rejoice and send announcements out about. And he says, now, in him, the kingdom of God is here. It's come near. It's broken in. That in Jesus, heaven is no longer some distant place, but breaks in right into creation so that it is all around us. That good news that Jesus brings is Jesus. He is the content of the good news. Jesus is God's love in flesh for us. God's sacrifice in flesh for us. God's service to us who should be serving him. God's forgiveness for us who in no way deserve it. The good news in Jesus is all gift. It's all grace. And he says, believe that. Trust that. Repent and believe the good news. And that word repent is one of those words that, that comes with a lot, of, a lot of, well, church weight. When we think of the word repent, I mean, what, what comes to mind? Stand up and tell everybody how lousy you are, right? I think about the, the uh, show Guys and Dolls, and there's a, a scene in the, in the musical Guys and Dolls where they're, they're in a, a mission, uh, a street mission, and you know, one of them, you know, one of the, the guys, one of the, the crooks, street folk, says to another, you know, well, you know, you need to testify. Stand up and tell everybody how lousy you are, all the terrible things you've done, and how you ain't going to do them no more. And that's what comes to mind when we think of repentance, isn't it? But for me, I think repentance is a much richer word than that. You know, when I was in graduate school, um, you know, in, in, col- or in uh, you know, grade school and, and even college, I was not a very technical person. Right? I was more a bookish music kind of person. Right? And I never took shop class in high school even. But in the lab that I worked in as a, as a PhD student, You didn't graduate, you didn't get a dissertation from that lab if you didn't spend time building things in the shop. We made our own instruments. And so when I went in to do that at first, and I had a a, a connection I needed to solder, and I remember standing there with the wires and trying to touch the soldering iron to the solder and get it to drip on the right spot, right? And, you know, it just, it didn't work very well, and then it broke off, and, uh, <clears throat> and then Bill, the, the guy who ran the shop, came over and said, no, 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 do it like this. And he put the soldering iron under the joint, and then touched the solder to that, and it, and it flowed right on the, the connection. And it made a perfect soldering joint right there. And once I saw that, okay, I would be stupid to go back and try it the way I was doing it before, wouldn't I? Okay. I repented of my broken ways. I repented of what didn't work because I knew there was something better. Okay. Repentance is letting go of what doesn't work so that we can receive what does. Jesus says repent and receive, believe in, the good news. Let go of those things that don't work. Let go of that striving to do it on your own. Let go of that that 
idea that you're actually in control of, of your own life and what's going to happen. Let go of your, your anger at people who don't conform to your way of thinking about things. Let go of your bitterness that life hasn't come out the way you had hoped. Let go of your, of your sin in the sense that Paul talks about it. Sin being anything that doesn't proceed from faith, proceed from trust in God. Let it all go so that our hands are open and empty and we can receive the good gift that God wants to place right there. If only we weren't so desperately clinging to things that don't work. Repent, Jesus says, and believe, trust that God isn't out to get you. But God loves you. Trust that God doesn't want to punish you, but has made a way for us to, to reconnect with him. That in Jesus Christ, God is reconciling all of it. The wild animals, the angels, and even us, back to God, our creator. So this, this Lenten season, I invite you to, to examine yourself, examine your life. What are you holding on to that is broken and doesn't work? Let it go. Repent. And instead receive the good news that is Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and let us together proclaim our faith 
using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And as we prepare to receive our offering this morning, let us do so as those who know that there is good news, and let us offer in the joy of that. Father, we thank you with all of our hearts for the good news you brought to us and for all we have, for it all comes from you. 
we return to you on this first Sunday of Lent a portion of what we have to help further the church's mission to reach others and welcome them into your fold. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, this is the joyful feast of the kingdom of God. This is a time not only to, to reflect on our feelings, on our broken ways, but to rejoice in the good news that the Christ has fixed it, the Christ has fixed us. And that this is his table where he invites us to come and party with him, to rejoice and be thankful. It is a place where we are strengthened, it is a place where we are nourished, and it is a place where we come together as God's people. So please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power. You formed us in your image to love and serve you, but we forgot your promises and abandoned your commandments. In your mercy, you did not reject us, but still claimed us as your own. When we were slaves in Egypt, you freed us and led us through the waters of the sea. You fed us with heavenly food in the wilderness and satisfied our thirst from desert springs. On the holy mountain, you gave us your law to guide us in your way. Through the waters of Jordan, you led us into the land of your promise, and you sustained us in times of trial. You spoke through prophets, calling us to turn from our willful ways to new obedience and righteousness. You sent your only Son to be the way to eternal life, and therefore we praise you, lifting our voices with choirs of angels and with all the joyful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. He took upon himself the weight of our sin and carried the burden of our guilt. He shared our life in every way and, though tempted, was sinless to the end. Baptized as your own, he went willingly to his death, and by your power was raised to new life. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We give you thanks that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, O God, we take this bread and this wine from the gifts you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died Christ is risen. Christ
Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. And now, O oh God, we ask that you hear those prayers we lift up in our hearts or that we speak out with voice, those concerns, those joys that we have as a church family. Help us, O oh God, to be obedient to your call to love all your children, to do justice and show mercy, and to live in peace with your whole creation. Guide us through the desert of life, quench our thirst with the living waters, satisfy our hunger with the bread of heaven. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection, when with the redeemed of all the ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will be receiving this morning by intention, a reminder that reminder that as you uh, come forward when you are uh, released by the ushers, uh, that you may come forward if you want to uh, touch the water here as a reminder of your baptism um, and touch to your forehead, feel free to do that. That as you receive the bread, you will hear the words, this is the body of Christ, and you re may respond with thanks be to God. And then as you re dip it into the cup, you will hear the words, this is the blood of Christ, and you may respond with thanks be to God or amen. And let us receive in joy. The table is ready. Come forward.
And now would you please join with me in our prayer after communion. Thank you, gracious God, for giving us bread for the journey of these 40 days. As we travel through the wilderness, help us to share your grace with others and draw us ever closer to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And please rise once again in body or in spirit as we sing our closing hymn, There is a Balm in Gilead. live our lives in this coming week, what does God call us to do? God calls us to be a Christ-centered missional church that proclaims the word of God and demonstrates the relevance of his word to all people. And sisters and brothers, as we head into the world today, a world that seems to know only bad news, let us be those who bring good news and remind people that God loves them, that God is on their side, and that Jesus can be their Jesus too. And let us go with God's blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest on and abide in us this day and every day. Amen.